Hi everybody, welcome back to Big T's Chop Shop. This is episode four of our series in machine tending with the uh, VersaBuilt Multi-Grip and the Tormac ZA6 robot. It's the moment we've been waiting for. It's taken almost a year of experimenting and fiddling around whenever I had some time, but I finally have things basically working. So we're gonna walk through a lot quicker today than I've done in the past episodes. Um, sort of how I've set up the final machine tending setup, what the robot's doing, what the mill's doing, and what it takes to make a part. So uh, basically the part is an OP1 uh, process that creates these two clips from this solid block. So pretty straightforward. Um, wasn't as easy as it looked, but let's enjoy what the results were and have a look at how things are set up. As we went through in a ton of detail on previous episodes in the series, this is the VersaBuilt multi-grip vise. It has the jaws that are basically also used as the grippers to pick up the material. And um, if you want to see more details about how to set that up, there's lots of content in the previous episodes. The other component in the system is the VersaBuilt FJ gripper. Again, I covered this in a lot of detail in the previous episodes, um, but this is what attaches to the ZA6 in order to allow it to pick up and manipulate those jaws on the vise. The math around my loading area is very, very simple. I've got this part set at 000 in a frame I defined for my pickup area then each of the other parts that I'm picking up is just relative to that. So this is zero, 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 negative four inches in X, negative eight inches in X. So figuring out where the parts are and where to load them is pretty straightforward. The elegance of the VersaBuilt system is that the vice jaws are also used basically as your gripper to pick up the part. So the robot grabs the jaws and then goes in and snatches our first blank to load into the machine. Once the part's loaded, then the CNC program runs. The first thing that my CNC program does is come in and ensure that the part was loaded correctly. So there's a little probing sequence that takes place that ensures that the part landed in the right spot in the jaws. So far, I haven't had too many misloads with the system, but better safe than sorry. Also, this will correct for any slight deviation in the location and where the part was actually loaded so that I've got an accurate zero to start the milling operations. So the machine satisfied itself that the part is loaded in the right position and the program can continue. At this point, Milling is milling, basically, so I'm gonna assume that you've seen this all before and we'll catch up again once we get to the end of this part. Fantastic, so we've just finished the end of our milling operations here and we're waiting for the robot to come in and pick up our part and clear the table so that we can load the next part. So basically the vise, um, there's a G53 command to move the vise into the pickup position. And then our arm should come over here any sec, yep. And uh, grab that finished part. And then move it back over to the loading area. To keep things simple right now, I'm just putting the parts back where they came from. So. Uh, it goes back to the same uh, location on the table that it was loaded from. Great, so we drop that off. And then the robot picks up the second blank to load into the machine. And 
and we come over and we place that onto the vise. Perfect. Uh, now basically the mill can start up the next operations here to cut the second part out. So we'll let that run and then check in again at the end of this cycle. Excellent. That's the end of our second part and we're moving on to uh, part number three here. So uh, same sequence as last time. Wait for the robot arm to come in and remove the part from the vise. There we go, we're picking it up. Now, one note here, um, obviously as um, the milling sequences have continued, we are getting a bit more chip buildup and, uh, and a bit more um, sort of general mess around there. Ultimately, this would be a problem, I think, this buildup. Um, but for what I'm doing here, it's one of the reasons I'm limiting myself to just three parts at a time for now. Uh, we'll have to solve that down the road, but for now, uh, we're just kind of ignoring the chip buildup problem, uh, and that's okay. Okay, here comes our third and final part of the sequence. We're about to drop that on the vise and uh, start the mill program again. There we go, off to the races. So if this finishes up, then I think we've had a complete sequence here. Uh, so let's let it run and come back and have a look. All right, job's done. And here we come for the pickup. That's the final part. So the robot should put the jaws back on the vise and uh, wrap up the program. Awesome. So we got our first three parts using the tending system. Um, super exciting for me. This was quite a journey to get there. I'd like to definitely give a shout out to the folks at Tormach that helped me debug my problems and understand these workflows and kind of get up to speed on how to even use a robot. Um, they were a ton of help. And, um, you know, obviously there's, there's room to grow, grow here where um, this isn't the be all and end all of attending setup. This is pretty basic, but I think now that I understand the patterns and how uh, the system works, it definitely gives me a foundation to uh, to explore this and kind of take it to the next level. So I'm gonna go back to the drawing board and, and take what I've learned and try to make a better system of it. Um, but thanks a lot for watching this series and, and following along with the, with the journey here. Obviously, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them, questions, comments down below. Other than that, thanks so much, and we'll see you again soon uh, at Big T's Chop Shop.